Okay, with this next problem, we're going to continue on uh, doing supply and demand curve analyses. Um, so this question is taken from Krugel and Wells, uh, Chapter 3, Question 11. In Rolling Stones magazine, several fans of rock stars, including Pearl Jam, are bemoaning the high price of concert tickets. One superstar argued it just isn't worth $75 to see me play. Uh, no one should have to pay that much to go to a concert. Uh, assume the star sold out arenas around the country at an average ticket price of $75. So question A, how would you evaluate the arguments that ticket prices are too high? Um, so first off, let's just kind of assume that there wasn't some uh, unmet demand. So let's just say that the $75 ticket price was the competitive equilibrium price. That is to say the price in which uh, the supply curve method demand curve. So at $75, the quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Uh, there's no additional people wanting to purchase tickets, and there's no people additional people will, wanting to sell tickets um, at you know at, at the price of 75. So if if that assumption is true, then the $75 price is you know it's the equilibrium price. No one could be better off at a different price. So in that sense, uh, to say that ticket prices is too high is kind of an odd statement. Um, so obviously I'm kind of simplifying things. So in the real world, oftentimes prices are uh, kept one way or the other. Um, so, I mean, suppose that there was some evidence that the $75 ticket price was too high. What evidence would that be? Well, evidence would of that would be that the concert halls uh, are not sold out. So if there were like excess seats inside the, the concerts, then that might be evidence that the $75 is too high. But this says to assume that the star sold out arenas around the country. So it seems to suggest that $75, that's a very reasonable price because all the all of the quantity supplied, all the quantity that the band is willing to supply is being met at that $75. So I'd sort of kind of reject um, the statement that $75 is too much. So turning to point B, suppose that due to this star's protest, ticket prices are lowered to $50. In what sense is the price too low now? Draw a diagram using the supply and demand curves to support your argument. So uh, give me one second to do this. Cool. So yeah, uh, suppose that the prices are lowered to $50. So uh, let's start off with this. This is uh, you got price on the vertical axis as always, quantity on the horizontal axis. Given our supply curve and our demand curve, we're sort of assuming, you know, coming on from part A, we're sort of assuming that there's the equilibrium price at the 75. That's where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And so now we're going to say that somehow they artificially lower the price down to $50. So what happens there? Well, at $50, uh, you have a supply curve down here, and you have a demand curve down here. Okay, so filling in a little bit of this, you could see at a price of $50, you have a, a, a smaller quantity supplied, so this quantity right here. Uh, and then at $50, you have an, a higher quantity demanded. So the difference between quantity supplied and quantity demanded is the shortage. So there. In this setup, where prices are kept artificially low, you're going to find that there's a shortage in the number of tickets that are produced in this market. OK, so now moving to part C. Uh, suppose Pearl Jam really did want to bring down their ticket prices. Since the band is actually in control of supply, I sort of assumed that there was this upward sloping supply curve, but the, they're actually in control of the supply. Um, other services, what do you recommend that they do? And explain using a supply and demand um, diagram. So first off, let me clean this up with the, uh, the price floor or price ceiling we had before. Okay, so if Pearl Jam did want to in decrease the average price, one option that they have is that they could increase the number of uh, shows that they do um, this year or you know during this period of time. So that would reflect an outward shift in the supply curve. So you have the old supply curve here, and you have the new supply curve over here. Um, and given their expansion in supply, you'd have this new equilibrium price down here. Um, so the next best option, would, or the best option actually, is probably to uh, just simply increase their supply. 
um, creating this new equilibrium price down here. And that would effectively lower the price. Moving on to part D. Suppose the band's next CD was a total dud. Do you think th they would still have to worry about ticket prices being too high? Why or why not draw a supply and demand diagram to support your argument? So uh, I think the logic that they're hinting at here is uh, if their next album's a dud, um, that would mean when they go back on to uh, you know the tour circuit, there's going to be fewer people demanding to see them live because you know if their album's a big hit, you usually get this you know big increase in demand to see the live performance. But if the CD was a dud, then um, fewer people would be demanding at any given price. So that reflects an inward shift in the demand curve. Thus, so with the demand curve shifting from D1 to our new demand curve here. We have a new equilibrium point at this location, and the new equilibrium point is associated with a lower price and a lower quantity demanded and quantity supplied in this market. Uh, and yeah, I suppose if Pearl Jam wanted to decrease their prices, they could just come out with worse music. Okay, and now uh, lastly, party. Suppose the group announced their next tour was going to be their last tour. What effect would this likely have on the demand for the for and uh, demand for and prices of tickets? Illustrate with a supply and demand diagram. So presumably, if um, it was announced that it's this um, this band's last uh, concert or last tour, that would probably be associated with a very big shift in the demand curve. Uh, since each person realizes that this is maybe their last opportunity to see these people live, um, so people are willing would be willing to pay a higher price uh, at every price. People would be more people would be uh, demanding um, these tickets uh, at any given price. So you have this outward shift in the demand curve. You have D1 shifting out to, to this new D2 level. You have your old equilibrium here at uh, I guess it was seventy-five dollars in Q1. And you have this new equilibrium price at some price. Um, what price that is that? We don't quite know, but uh, we'll call it P2 for now. Um, and then what happens to the quantity? Um, since it's an outward shift, um, we have this outward, in, we have this increase in the quantity of um, these tickets. So at uh, where the new demand curve meets the new supply curve, we have an increase in price and an increase in um, quantity. Uh, and that's it. Thanks, and hopefully that was helpful.